Hi Lego fans! I thought this set would never hit the shelves, but once again Lego has orchestrated a miracle. Their virtuoso designers have created a masterpiece that not only looks awesome, but actually plays itself. So long as you have six AAA batteries and a smartphone, of course. Today, I'm going to be unboxing, speed building, and reviewing set number 21323, Grand Piano, a 3662 piece set from Lego Ideas. This is the 31st set to come from the Lego Ideas program, formerly Lego Cuso. It's based on a fan submission from Chinese Lego fan Donny Chen, aka Sleepy Cow. Donny gained the necessary 10,000 votes and qualified for the third review panel of 2018. Lego deferred their decision until Q1 2019, and finally Donny's playable Lego piano was given the Lego seal of approval. The box art makes this set look very classy, and it's clearly aimed at adult fans. As the box states, this is aimed at builders aged 18 plus. The price tag of 350 euros, 320 Great British pounds, or 350 dollars confirms this is no ordinary box of bricks. We have a full-on grand piano, complete with adjustable bench and working innards powered by LEGO's app-controlled Powered Up system. Over on the back of the box, we get a closer look at the functions of this 3662-piece playable piano. It also seems that the piano is playing to a socially distant audience. Did LEGO know something we didn't when designing the packaging? The grand piano is not only a beautiful thing, it also has some impressive dimensions. This thing is 12 inches or 30.5 centimeters wide, 13 and a half inches or 35.5 centimeters long, and stands an impressive eight and a half inches or 22.5 centimeters tall. All of the components you need to motorize the set are included in the box. The only things you don't get are six AAA batteries and a tablet or mobile device to use the app. As a wannabe, not very good piano player, I'm curious to see how good this thing is going to sound. But to get to the stage where we can hear this play, I estimate we have about six hours of build time. Before we get started with the speed build, let's open up the box and see what we've got inside. Here's everything that came inside the box. You could literally fill a concert hall with this stuff. We've got about 30 bags of Lego numbered for stages 1 through 21, a 562 page instruction booklet, three 16 by 6 tan base plates, probably the longest Technic Axle Lego makes, a bunch of golden tubes which look just like spaghetti, a random bag containing a motor, some base plates and more spaghetti, and yet another random bag containing some kind of sensor, a battery box, and some more spaghetti. My son and I are going to go ahead and build the Lego Grand Piano, but you won't miss any of the fun, as today this is going to be a 4 minute speed build!
And here is a completed 21323 Grand Piano from LEGO Ideas and Donnie Chen. I predicted that build time would be about 6 hours, and it was actually 6 hours and 1 minute. We're going to take a very detailed look at the Grand Piano, and later in the video I'll attempt to show you how it works. Before all that, I think we should see it play. While I will say this is an amazing piece of kit, it is far from perfect. Firstly, this thing will not work without a smartphone, and it is the smartphone that's making the noise. I kind of hope the upbox may have a speaker. The other thing you may have noticed is that the keys aren't playing the tune. These are going up and down in a set pattern and do not represent the notes of the music. Up to now I've been layering on the soundtrack from the app. You'll notice that sounds all nice and clear. The reality is somewhat different because the motor makes this high-pitched whining noise. You can also hear the clunking of the keys going up and down. As an item of curiosity and something to impress your friends with, this is absolutely brilliant. It was also superb to build. As well as listening to the piano play itself, you can also put it into play mode where you can play the keys. This is not all it's cracked up to be. Firstly, this thing is not polyphonic. You cannot play chords on it. Basically, all that happens when you push down on a key is that it recognises that you pushed a key sometimes and plays a note. Sometimes two. Before we get too deep in the weeds with all the mechanics, let's take a look at this as a piece of art. The first thing you'll notice with this set is the sheer size and heft of the thing. This is most definitely not a minifigure scale build. The piano is finished in this gorgeous gloss piano black. If you enjoy dusting, you are gonna love this thing. I've already had to break out some microfiber cloths just to make sure this thing doesn't look like crap on camera. The mirror shine may be beautiful, but I find its lack of ability to resist fingerprints disturbing. As an example of the snot or studs not on top building technique, this thing is an absolute masterpiece. One of the few places you'll see exposed Lego studs is down here on the legs. Check out the Greek style decoration at the top of the legs which has just a few studs exposed. Other than that, the legs are pretty much covered in glossy black tiles. There are some anti-studs on the back of the legs and I find it interesting that Lego didn't try to cover those up. The elements used on the end of the piano keys would have done this just nicely. Perhaps LEGO just don't make these in black. A really nice touch is the casters on the bottom of the feet which actually work. The side of the piano is beautifully contoured and incorporates some curved pieces. They give the piano a very fluid, organic and tactile shape. I was about to comment on the stud that was left visible on the side and then I realised that was a total mistake. This should indeed be covered. All the way around the piano you'll find a beautiful finish. For example, check out the neat interlocking tiles on the back. Perfection like this keeps my OCD very happy. Look a little closer and you'll see some compromises were made. For example, these 1x3 tiles with a hole in the top. Any guesses where you've seen that before? Allow me to decapitate Unikitty. Yes, those are the 1x3 pieces which are used to attach Unikitty's head to her body. Generally though, in the most commonly seen places, the layout of the tiles is very nice. At the front of the piano we have this beautiful hinged cover covering up the keys. We even have a gold bullion element to represent the latch where people would often lock their piano. 
Heaven forbid the kids would play it. Lifting up the cover reveals the keyboard. We're a little short on the usual 88 keys, but we do have a two octave keyboard. I have heard a few people complaining about the fact that the keys don't necessarily align correctly. It is possible to get this right with a little finagling, but using the automatic playing action does seem to get them misaligned. The feature I really like here is the printed gold Lego tile underneath the lid. I don't think the craftsmanship is quite up to Steinway levels, but it's really nice. If you think that's cool, check this out. We have a soft close lid. Now if only Lego made some shiny versions of those sloped pieces. I'm sure with the right equipment you could probably buff those to a shiny finish. While they are a little bit difficult to align, the keys themselves do look very nice. The major and minor keys are a little out of proportion, but there's no doubt this is a piano. We even have red elements behind the keys to represent the felt cushioning. If you're looking for somewhere to put your music, then LEGO has thought of that. Underneath the flap there's a music stand, but to get to that we're going to have to open the lid. Like any grand piano, you can open up the lid to increase the intensity of the sound. We can now set up the music stand, and use it to support our sheet music, or a smartphone. The sheet music is a printed part and has the notes for the song Playday by Donnie Chen. I don't know whether Donnie Chen wrote the music, but the piano will certainly play it. Something that worries me about the lid is the lack of anything to restrict the movement. Opening this too far could definitely put some stress on those hinges. A simple solution could have been using a chain or a piece of string in here to restrict the movement. Actually, now that I look a little bit closer, the flap on top of the lid does a good job of supporting it. Now we can take a good look at all of the stuff inside the piano. Towards the back here you see what would be the cast iron soundboard. This is equipped with holes to allow sound to resonate through, and those holes are surrounded by really nice metallic gold elements. Continuing with the gold theme, we have the strings of the piano. These are the things I described as spaghetti earlier in the video. I really like all of the gold clips holding these in place. On top of the strings you can see the dampers that work with the sustain pedal. The piano makes notes when hammers hit the strings, and these dampers can be raised to make those notes last longer. These are a working part and are activated by the pedals. Around the edge we have some rather nice chrome metallic 1x1 plates. At first I thought these might be pins, but I think they're more likely to be screws in the soundboard. Tucked away just behind the keyboard you can just see the hammers which hit the keys. We'll take a look at those in just a second. The other thing I wanted to show you real quick is the music stand. This is adjustable and the Technic axles just behind it help it stay in place. It's a great place to put your sheet music, or if you prefer you can put your smartphone there. To truly show you how the keyboard and hammer action work, we are going to have to remove the action frame. To do that we'll start by turning the piano upside down. It's not very often we get to see a piano from this angle. On the underside of the keyboard we find two pins which lock it in place. One, and two. Now we can carefully remove the keyboard cover, and the action board itself. This is the most intricate but also repetitive part of the build. It's also rather cool. I mean just check out those gold pieces. Essentially the keyboard is made up of 25 pivoting levers, each of which operate a hammer. It works a bit like this. Each key has a very small pivot point formed from the grey and the gold elements you see in the middle. Typically when your keys aren't sitting right it's because these have either come out of place or weren't quite seated correctly. The keyboard is fantastically designed and looks great, but it does have a very plastic clunky action, pretty much what you'd expect from LEGO. There are also clearly no motors and no mechanical parts, so let's see what else is going on inside the piano. Deep within the piano is where all the magic lies. If I start up the app, it's all well pretty underwhelming. We have a single motor that turns the shaft at the back. Attached to that we have a bunch of red, white and blue levers which are spaced to align with the keys and cause them to move up and down. Also under the hood you can see how the sustain pedal works. The brains controlling all of this wizardry are hidden away in the back of the piano. This is the powered up hub and the blue light tells us it's listening to everything we say and reporting it back to LEGO in Denmark. The green button is used to pair the hub to your smartphone using Bluetooth and the battery box itself contains 6 AAAs. The hub is capable of connecting to two devices. In this case we have a single motor which drives the keys, and if you look really carefully there's an optical sensor buried away deep inside the piano. Inside there's a long axle which moves up and down as the keys play. 
As this moves up and down, it triggers the optical center. As you can see, it's not very precise, but it is a nice gimmick. Another really interesting part of the mechanism is the reset function. When you set the piano playing, the keys of course move up and down. But what if you stop them? We don't want the keys left like this, but thankfully LEGO thought of that. As the mechanism turns and the keys go up and down, you'll notice it triggering this brake mechanism. This allows the axle to turn clockwise, but not anti-clockwise. When we stop the music, the keys are usually not in their default position. Hitting the reset button in the app causes the mechanism to move backwards until it hits the brake. This leaves the mechanism in its default position with the keys all level, or thereabouts. Okay, so I've showed you how this magnificent grand piano works, but I've really not shown you the Powered Up app. Let's dive in and take a real quick look. So we're launching the app, uh, and this thing actually works with a bunch of different LEGO sets. As you can see here, we've got the Crocodile Train, we've got the Haunted House, we've got loads of city trains. But the thing we're interested in today is the Grand Piano. So when we launch this, we're going to get a couple of different options. Firstly, uh, we do have a configuration up here to actually connect the powered up box, which it seems to have forgotten the connection. So I'm going to go ahead and press that now. Let's do that. And yes, we're connecting. Perfect. All right, so we've got two different options. We can either play the piano, which is where we hit the keys, and we've got a bunch of different uh, tunes we can play here. Actually, only five of them. We've got Fur Elise, we've got Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, all of the good ones. But the ones we're really interested in are the listen. So as we come into here, we've actually got 10 different songs. In fact, yeah, it is 10 different songs that we can play back. And I want to be mindful of copyright on any of these. Um, we'll go with Moonlight, Moonlight Sonata because I'm pretty sure Beethoven's been dead for quite some time. So it'll select it when we hit play. The app is going to start playing music. There we go. And the piano starts playing, which is excellent. And uh, this is pretty, um, pretty dreary music. So let's just stop that. We'll hit refresh and go back and we'll do one more song. So yeah, really, really simple to use the app. I'm just going to go into say the entertainer here and you push play and everything just works. It's really cool. When you're done, hit the stop button, hit the uh, refresh or the reset icon and you're all set. The piano is missing one important thing, which I've not showed you yet. Unless you're little Richard or Elton John, you're probably going to sit down when you use the piano. That's where this thing comes in handy. A grand piano deserves a grand piano bench, and LEGO has nailed it. This plush covered seat is actually an inverted plate covered in sliders. Sticking to snot building techniques, we have no studs visible on these simple but elegant legs. In fact, every visible surface is glossy black and smooth. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Even more beautiful is the mechanism that raises and lowers the bench, because let's face it, some of us need some help. It's a pretty simple scissor lift mechanism, but it works flawlessly. The dials on either side operate a worm gear, which makes the bench either rise or fall. It's a beautifully engineered object and the perfect companion for the grand piano. So paired with the bench, the piano is now complete, but we are still missing something. What we could really use is a 12 inch pianist. Clearly this is not built to minifigure scale, so a minifigure just isn't going to cut it. I did ask Freddy to help out, but his arms just weren't long enough to reach the keys. Freddy suggested asking Mr. T, but Mr. T just refused. I ain't playing on no keys. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a Lord Vin Hidero posable figure. However, this posable biker scout is a pretty good fit. We also thought about Voltron, as he looks a little bit like Elton John. Unfortunately, Voltron's knees don't bend, so he can't sit down. King Matthias was just too small. Jeffrey the giraffe was just plain ridiculous, and this guy was just a liability. Finally, we found the perfect figure. It was, of course, the Rancor. He loves all music except disco, and he has perfect piano playing hands. The only downside is that Rancor can get a little bit bitey when he gets no tips, and he only knows one song. That grows old pretty fast. So that was set number 21323, the 3662 piece grand piano from LEGO Ideas. This thing is absolutely magnificent and one of the finest LEGO creations I've ever seen. Sure, you can bang on the keys and it makes noises, but I would love each one of the keys to have its own note. The mechanism, albeit a little bit temperamental, is absolutely fantastic. Even the piano stool is a little work of art. 
The thing that worries me about a set like this is the fact that it relies on an app. Apps come and go, and when you can no longer get the Powered Up app from the App Store, this is going to be a pretty but non-functioning item. One thing's for sure, this is a very impressive LEGO set, and even with the $350 price tag, I don't think that's terrible value for money. It is both a challenging and very rewarding build, and definitely worthy of that 18 plus recommended age range. I really enjoyed building this and showing you guys how it works. If you enjoyed the video as much as I did making it, a thumbs up is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. No time for an encore today, so thanks a million for checking out the review, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next build video.